generally they'll happen about the same time. Like we'll have an idea and maybe Ollie will think a bit of a hook or a little line. Pretty much we started off with a real simple bass line. So have we got any basses? Anyone play bass guitar? You play bass guitar, cool. So it's a real simple thing. It's just a, a one note part. So you could just do it on one string. So even if you're not like an amazing guitarist, you could write something like this. It's really easy. So I'll play you uh, the part and then you can see what I'm talking about, okay? And there's a, there's a little click track on it, just going just to show you the timing, okay? So ignore that because it's kind of annoying. Like the first idea for the song. What we're going to try and do for the whole lesson is just show you how simple it is to write a song basically, so that then when you go and write a song, you don't feel like you have to make it really complicated and stuff. So, yeah, so that's where the song started, just with those notes. Everyone cool? Do you understand? Yeah. Okay, so that was like the first thing we wrote for the song. So basically I just looked at the notes we were using and made chords from them. So obviously if I played it on one string it would sound pretty yeah. chip. So like all I did is use simple chords. That if, if anyone plays guitar, the chords are just uh, C, A, E major and added G. So it's like pretty simple, I'll show you. But... <laughs> really trying to teach you how to play the song necessarily because you can learn that just by going on the internet. Uh, we're more trying to show you just how the song was put together and how easy it is to put together a song sort of thing. So once you combine the bass and the guitar, it sounds a bit like this. We'll follow that so far. Cool. Next thing I want to show you is just like, so we have we have a little chord pattern uh, progression. That's basically the chorus of the song, yeah? So then we came up with a little beat, real simple thing, and it's an electronic drum beat. Do any of you mess around with like electronics or uh, synthesizers or software like Cubase or GarageBand or anything like that? Have any of you ever experienced that kind of stuff? Do you have how to play with it? You it? You've tried, okay. I've tried to. And the beat is pretty much just uh, as easy as it gets. Yeah, I'm just going to show you the beat uh, that goes underneath those guitars to make it, and you'll start to see how it sounds a bit more like the final song. I'll get rid of the click for you. So as you can see, it's real simple, just boom, ga, boom, boom. Yeah, it's pretty much just like a kick, drum, and a clap, yeah? When you take the, the beat and the bass and the guitar, it starts to sound a bit more like the song you might recognize, so... We've got a few different layers and it's starting to sound a bit more like a song. And everything that's, that you've heard so far is, I think, really simple. Basic chords that you could learn like in your first few lessons. Uh, the beat is easy and the bass line is really simple, so it's nothing complicated. Now I'll show you Matt's drums, that's probably worth looking at. So once we had that electronic beat doing the... Matt got on his drum kit and he wrote a beat to kind of match along with it, which sounds like this. the drums and the electronic beat together it kind of gives the drums a bit more of a like epic big sound because you've got all that reverb on the clap sounds like this so if you take away the clap it, it just sounds a bit more like this. 
it kind of makes the drums sound a bit more heavy and a bit more like huge. So now you've pretty much got a beat, guitar, bass, it's the basics of a song pretty much, basics of a chorus. The next thing I guess is, I'll show you some of the synths, any of you guys who are interested in like synths or keyboards or we yeah, weird sounds and stuff like that, I'll show you some of the stuff that is in there that you might not have heard and just kind of tell you how you might, how you can make it because it's really easy to make. These are some of the elements that I've that I put in there that you may not have heard uh, first time. If you listen to the record, you may not have heard it. Uh, there's this one, which is kind of like a, it's like a synth pad. So if you've got like a keyboard, it's just like a just like a sustained sound. Um, and the notes are really easy. They follow, they follow the bass line. So again, I'm not really adding, adding anything in particularly clever, but it's just one note following the bass line and then another higher note that kind of makes it sound a bit more spooky. It's real simple, but it's, it's like just a load of different layers of sounds, and it makes it sound huge. You know what I mean? Like it's got that kind of. So when you mix, like if you put the drums and the electronic beat and that in together, you get more of a like. It sounds kind of haunting and spooky. <laughs> Everyone follow? Cool, okay. So I'm going to show you just a couple more things. Again, this one's more aimed at anyone who's interested in like working on a computer or making weird sound. And um, there's this, uh, there's actually a, a woman's voice just going, me, which I downloaded an MP3 off the internet of this, just an acapella, which basically is just a woman singing on her own. She had like a real nice breathy voice, like really like, <sighs> so I, I took, uh, the end of one of the lines where she was talking said me and I kind of chopped the me off and then put loads of reverb on it but then every time the chorus comes around this me kicks in and it kind of makes the chorus sound really heavy uh, and well I like it anyway it kind of sounds like a cymbal because it's got the breathy to it I'll show you it and next time you listen to the track you'll probably notice it mixed in there it's real simple it's just a it sounds a bit weird on its own, but then when you mix it in with like the, the synths and the drum, it, it makes the, every time the chorus repeats, it makes it sound a bit more, the drop a bit more powerful. You get this like... <laughs> that's something that you'd ever do but it just shows you that you can use weird sounds yeah oh yeah there's another thing as well I don't know if you want to talk about that I did some uh, guitars that kind of followed the keyboards that Jordan did as well but uh, has anyone ever heard of an Ebo? Ebo oh, yeah. uh, I just used loads of basically it just vibrates the string and then I put reverb on a lot but uh, yeah it sounds weird so <laughs> So again, it's all about little layers all working together to create the full sound, you know what I mean? Yeah, if you hear like the, the woman going me uh, and the Evo and the synths together with the electronic beat and the drums. <laughs> sound a bit more like the song off the record yeah it's kind of layers yeah it's all different layers and everything has its space so obviously you don't want to have if you've got a bass guitar playing really low and obviously if you've got your bassist or someone playing real low then you probably want to think about having something else doing something higher otherwise they're going to be competing for the same frequency range and it could get a bit messy so that's a big part of the battle of trying to layer stuff this synthesizer sound here <laughs> That's maybe eight different synths, but they're all doing the same thing, so it sounds like one sound. But I'll often like layer loads of different synths because I kind of like the sound, like it sounds huge. 
because it's lots of different layers. So we use that a lot to make things sound really big. You know what I mean? This is like a vocal line, Ollie's vocal, that leads into the chorus. So you probably recognize it, it's in the verse. I'm just going to play you it first and then um, show you how, if, again, for any of you guys who like to mess around in computers or are interested in like tunes, how to make a tune, I'll show you how we made the tune in the chorus. It's the kind of one that goes like, and like a catchy tune. I'll show you how that was made. Can you hear the silence? Can you see the dark? That's Oliver. Can you fix the broken? Can you feel? Can you feel my heart? So that kind of leads into the chorus, and then there's no vocal over the chorus. There's not like any singing place. All there is in the chorus is actually that. So I'm going to show you how I made it. It's basically just pretty much based on his vocals. So I've, I've taken a section of his singing and then chopped it and then just changed the note, moved it round to make a little tune. So if any of you guys have ever messed around in like GarageBand or Cubase or Logic or Pro Tools or any kind of software, even stuff you can get for free, this is really easy to do. I just took a little section from uh, the heart line here. Can you feel my heart? So that bit there, I just took a little section. So you can kind of make a note out of it because it's like, it's like a, sounds like a note, doesn't it? So then I took that and then kind of chopped it. And then I pitched it around to make different notes. So I had a little tune in my head. So I pitched his vocal and made it. It's real simple and it's just chopped out of the vocal. So when you hear it, actually, the actual final one has got some other stuff in it and it's a bit distorted, it sounds a bit different, but it sounds... So it's basically a vocal chopped up and uh, moved around to make a melody. But I mean, it's the kind of melody that you guys could easily write like on a keyboard or any, any instrument really. You could write that melody on a guitar, it doesn't really matter. It's more about the fact that it's catchy. Get stuck in your head, sort of. Do you have to wait till you're done with the, the whole song or you, or you write as the song goes on? I mean the, the voice oh, melody. The vocals? Yeah, yeah. Or, or at least the melody. On this CD we, we wrote a lot of the choruses. Like we'd, we'd get um, a rough chorus musically and then Ollie would sing a chorus. But he, um, a lot of the time it wouldn't be lyrics and stuff, it'd just be like notes. And then he'd uh, redo it with lyrics and stuff. And a lot of time we used a, a trumpet, which sounds stupid, but we had like a trumpet sound that played the chorus, yeah. and then he wrote the lyrics to a trumpet. So I like guess if, if you're trying to write, if maybe if you've got some chords or something on a guitar or on a piano, we'll often write a vocal melody, but not singing, we'll write it on a different instrument. So with this one, we wrote the melody. <laughs> That was all written on a just a MIDI. So you have to first uh, write the lyric. Well, we what do you do first? The melodies first, and then and the then, lyric. Okay. And then Ollie will have an idea of what he's going to do with lyrics <coughs> as it's coming together. He'll start to get an idea. But with this album, at no point did he come in with lyric, and then we tried to write a song around it. Yeah, because I was wondering. It sounds like I don't know Shadow Moses, for instance. What do you do first? Do you get the, like, we had, the melody? We had, we had nearly the whole song written musically before we even thought about vocals. So the only, I think, what was the first thing in that? We wrote pretty much the whole song and I think then, I think then we came up with that. Uh, Can you tell from the look in our eyes? But that was a trumpet originally. It was... I'm not even lying, that is how it was written. <laughs> Yes, but I'm good at a trumpet impression. <laughs> so then, uh, so we'd, we'd work on a melody that we thought was really strong and catchy. Yeah, yeah. And then, it, you know, and then we were like, okay, cool. So then Ollie would go away and be like, yeah, I've got this idea. Um, and he'll start thinking about uh, lyrics, how, how he can make it work. So, yeah. We tend to write with music first, but some people write lyrics first. Yeah, yeah. And then they'll try and write music around it, but I think it's a lot harder. Yeah, actually. You can't do it. I mean, it works for some people, but for us, we don't, we don't tend to do it. It's hard to fit music around yeah. it. So 
but generally they'll happen about the same time. Like we'll have an idea, and maybe Ollie will think a bit of a hook or a little line and say, yeah, yeah. Oh, "I think I've got this little bit," da, 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 da. and then we'll be like, "Okay, cool. Well, we'll carry on working." Sometimes though, Ollie will say, "Like I want this um, this song to be like uplifting, like euphoric and stuff." So he's got he's got an idea that his lyrics are going to be more uh, not as negative. They're going to be a bit like more like I don't know, positive. Yeah, like positive. positive. Yeah, yeah, positive. So like from that we like rag chords that we think will go that have like a more positive vibe to it and stuff rather than going for something super dark you can like if you have lyrics if you know they're going to be sad you know that the guitar yeah the tune has to be sad yeah. as well so, like, yeah, yeah. we do do stuff like that if he's got like a general idea also even things like a good example is in Shadow Moses this is a paternal bit he had the idea for that and the song used to it didn't used to have that big gap in it but then obviously when he came in with that lyric and it was the name of the album we were kind of like well maybe it went it would make it more so you change the music yeah to, yeah you have that he, gap yeah yeah so they kind of work together like as the lyrics are starting to come together then the music will adapt to fit certain things and I think like that's when you get a really good song is when the lyrics and the music like working together yeah yeah you know what I mean like there'll be a section where so it, for example in this song when it gets um, so I can't be alone everything kind of goes all moody because it's like a build up yeah yeah and it's a repeated line so we'll automatically be thinking okay this is a build up so then He'll, he'll start playing something a bit quieter and a bit more build the up and Yeah, exactly. He'll play with his fingers rather than playing with a pick. I mean, it's kind of stuff that sounds obvious, but when I was like 15, 16, and I started writing music, I didn't think about yeah. it. You know what I mean? Yeah, you developed that skill. Yeah, you know, yeah exactly. So you just, you just learn. But it's just about thinking, like, what's, what's going to suit this section? So when he came up with that vocal, we were like, okay, we can write this whole section and build it up around those vocals and it's yeah exactly and he's got some real simple chords and then sort of after a couple of repeats Matt comes in with the and starts building it up but all, all of those elements do you add them up after you finish the song I mean the like the the whole synthesizers and all that stuff no do you I, have to for, for me I like with synths I usually will have a rough idea <laughs> I'll have something down, it might not be the finished version, but I'll have I'll at least, so, like, there's, there's quite a lot of piano in that song. So I had the piano chords, I'd already written them, but then when it, got to, when it, when it gets to that section, it breaks down, and, you know, it kind of goes like this. Yeah, yeah. That was like, we wanted that to drop out to nothing to increase the drama of when it comes back in, because that's what you want to do, is try and make everything as dramatic as possible. Yeah, really. yeah. So... We thought if it cuts down to nothing completely and goes dead quiet and then gradually builds up, then when it cracks back in, yeah, yeah. Kind of like you're kind of working to bring the most out of every song. So. Perfect.